Hi everybody, I'm Stephanie from Razzle Dazzle Rabbitry and Yarns LLC. Welcome to the channel. Today we are going to do a hand carding video using our Howard hand carders. They're 190 teeth per inch. Um, these are about the size of my hand. So these aren't huge hand carders and they're not curved. These are flat. I've used these for a very long time. They've got little things falling out of them for years upon years. And um, definitely subscribe to the channel. Click the bell if you haven't already. That way you get all of our videos on all things Angora, fiber arts, fiber animals, Angora rabbits, all that good stuff. We have our tea with us, which is very important. We have our scale with us. Uh, this is a very special scale because it is not just to the tenth of an ounce, it's to the one hundredth of an ounce. So it has an extra decimal place. So when you look at this, when you turn it on, this measures an extra decimal place. This is very important for accuracy in spinning um, consistent yarn. And that's one of the things we want to do. Let's put our hair up. So we're going to go through the process and the fiber we're using is uh, is available in something called our Spinner's Surprise Box. That's available at RazzleDazzleRabbitry.com. And each month, free shipping, you get, uh, just for a base fee, you get three ounces of surprise fiber, and you get to spin along in the videos, hand card along with the videos, all that good stuff. It's an online guild, which is absolutely amazing. There's quite a few members already. And um, this is for March. Let's go ahead, we're gonna use our scale. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide up, I love this, look at this fiber. There's so many different colors in here. This is absolutely beautiful. This is roving, 100% um, Peruvian Highland wool. We're gonna divide this up into three ounces. No, 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 that's not right. The whole thing is three ounces. We're gonna divide this up into, um, three one ounce piles. So this is three ounces that you get mailed. Goodness gracious. That's why we have our scale. We're gonna um, tilt the camera down a little bit more so you can see it. All right, so we want to see how much this weighs on our scale. That's what we're putting it on. And then divide that into three. If you notice, this, is, this gets kind of difficult. Look at how toppily this is easiest thing to do is to have it in a um, in a bowl or in a bag but you want to press the tear on this first so we're gonna divide this up let's see here using our little scale This one needs a little bit more actually. You want to be somewhere around 0.4 ounces. Somewhere around there. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you divide it up, you weigh it like this. Three piles. One, two, and three. And a little string that doesn't belong there. Next, ready? I love this. This is washed. Um, they're just absolutely, there's a little bit of vegetable matter in these, but these are washed locks. Gotland. We're going to divide these up here. Same thing. Keep them as even as we can. You use your scale in this. So divide it up. That's what we're doing. And then we have our raw angora. This is a beautiful, beautiful angora. It is from uh, my rabbits. So when you sign up to get the subscription box, this is what you would have got for March. Perfect. 
got that divided into our sections. So now we have three different fibers, right? And we want to take these fibers, and this is where as long as we have it divided out into the singular ounce um, sections, these are all sections of one ounce, we're then going to divide this a little bit more into four different sections. And so all of this fiber gets divided up into four piles. So let's show that to you. So we're starting to divide this up into four piles. Wow! Let's have a crazy camera there. Okay, so this is the Angora next. When I divide it up into piles, I'm dividing it up into four. I have a fan on that I have to turn off because if you have a fan on with your Angora, it's not going to be very helpful. Fans off. Great. Now we have our piles of four. And what we want to do, we're done with the scale for now. We want to take our hand carter. And I set it on my leg. So let's show you that. Ready? This is on my leg. And, um, Roll up my sleeves a little bit. My hands are a little dry. I want to blend these together. So I'm just going to load my hand carter. And I use my left hand to pinch the wool down. And then we'll put some Angora on there. I really load my hand carters. Um, Sometimes. And we're going to put a little bit of these Gatlin locks on here. Now one of the things you're going to notice when you get this box in the mail is that the fiber is all quite different. So the, the micron count, how thick the fiber is, you'll notice the Gatlin wool is going to feel different. It's going to feel thicker than the Angora. But the Peruvian Highland, that's going to feel, it's not going to feel as thick as the Gotland. So we have the, the thinnest is the Angora. Next is the um, brown Peruvian Highland roving. And then the thickest, the biggest micron count is the Gatland. This is how our carter, a hand carter looks. We're gonna pull like this. This is gonna help straighten and align the fibers. So we wanna spin a more consistent yarn and we want these a bit more blended together. Now there's a little bit of vegetable matter, like I said, in the Gatland still. There's just a tiny bit in the Angora that's pretty normal. Uh, there's really none in the processed roving. This is after one pass. Switch hands. Now we have this over here. And we're going to do the same thing, that same motion. We're going to blend this together and straighten out the fibers, align it, the fibers, getting the fibers going in the same direction. At that's what we're doing right now, and we're really adding, when we do this, it also, if you notice with these Gatlin locks, some of these locks are pretty close together. This spaces them out, this breaks them apart, this aerates them, this adds air, this makes them lofty. When you have lofty fiber that's not compacted together, then that's going to produce yarn that has a bit of loft as well, as long as you don't add too much twist. So this is the third time I'm going through this. I don't normally go through three times because the more times you let the fiber pass through the hand carters, you might start getting them stuck on the teeth. That's called naps. We don't want that. So this we pass three times through. I like what I'm seeing for the blend. And I'm going to roll it off just like this. This is how our roll egg looks. 
This is going to spin up really nice. This is going to make a really beautiful yarn. So one done. We're going to set it aside and we have a bit more of this fiber left. We're going to load the hand carter the same way. Just keep on going. Now normally in a situation like this, if you're spinning trying to spin for production, spinning consistent yarn for production for a business, for example, you're going to want to get your hand carding somewhere around 10 minutes or less per ounce. Did you see I just loaded this differently? I put the, I put the Gatland on second instead of third, but that's okay because this is still going to blend together. So we have all this on here. This one has a little less. But you want to, one of the things I recommend is you time yourself. So if you're doing this just for fun and you don't care about time, you don't care about your production, then who cares? But if you're doing this and this is a business and you're, you want to do this for a living, the amount of time you spend matters. The amount of time you spend working on each ounce, uh, it all adds up. And in your business time, is going to be money. So that was the second time. Let's do one more blending of this. This is going to be a slightly, definitely, uh, smaller roll leg. And I don't get everything off this, and that's okay, because I'm going to keep using these hand carters. Ready? So we tilt it down, we put it up like this, and then we use little motions like this to take it off. So this is how we're doing it. This is what's blending it together, and this is what we're going to spin. Two done. All right, let's work on our next little section here. This one I'm just going to divide into two right away. Now, no trick about pulling roving apart. If you hold your hands really close together like this, difficult to pull it apart. Put your hands like this. You can use your fingertips, pull it apart. Just a little trick. Okay, same way of loading. If you have to, again, use that trick where you put your hand at the top. Um, don't have to if you don't want to. We're gonna load that. Keep loading on. This does not have to be perfect by any means. This, if you want, you can send your Gotland if you have a picker, like a triple picker, for example. You want to send, you can send it through that. That'll make it easier to load on your carter, your hand carters. All right, next. Blend this together. And it's okay when you're hand carding. Um, sometimes you can get caught up in doing this and making sure every moment, every movement you do is right. And you can get really caught up in like the preciseness of it. Uh, for me, that's not fun. For me, that just kills any creative and I don't like it. For me, there's a, there's a part in this where there's, there's some that we measure, there's some that we keep, um, more strict. But then there's others that, you know, this is creation, this is making something, and it has to be, there has to be a bit of wiggle room, there has to be a bit of freedom in this, because if it's completely, for me, if it's completely restricted, if it's completely technical, if it's completely just by everything uh, robotic and mechanical and um, restricted, I, to me that's no fun. I have that kills any creativity that I would have. So allow yourself to just experiment and try it out. And that's part of why the spinner surprise boxes are so fun because naturally there's all sorts of different fibers that you get to work with and it's just a little bit of each. So you don't have to be overwhelmed by the amount of fiber. Like, Starting out with an entire sheep fleece is overwhelming, especially if it's a raw sheep fleece and it's the first time you're hand carding and the first time you're processing something. I don't recommend that. I recommend starting out, this one we only did two times, so that's okay, but I recommend starting out with doing a subscription like the Spinner's Surprise Box because when you're learning, 
and you're learning how to do it, this is naturally built in to help you grow and help you improve your skills and help you improve your skinny and spinning and, and build that community and build confidence and just have more fun with it. Let's load this one up. I was going to stop right there, but let's load it up. Let's get this hand carter just completely loaded. Why not? Because we can. So we will. So we load it on. And the fiber, I love this about fiber. Fiber tells us what it wants. And we can listen to it, or we can ask it to do other things. We can really listen to the fiber and say, okay, Angora, you must... You want to be spun thin. You can see quite a bit of crimp in this section of the angora. Um, so we can listen to the fiber or we can ask it to do something else. And just because we ask it to do something else doesn't mean the fiber will always do exactly what we want it to. Fiber has, uh, fiber has its own way of doing things. This is a second cut in the Gotland. If you find second cuts, just pick them out right away. They're, they're just gonna be a problem to spin with and they happen. They absolutely happen. In a natural sheep fleece, in a natural angora, you are going to find second cuts. It's just the way it is. Uh, you don't want to find too many, but they're going to be there. So because I loaded this up, I'm going to do this one three times again for sure. This looks like it's going to be very fun to spin. I don't know how exactly. I know I'm going to do three, um, two-ply. I don't know if I want to do three two-ply skeins, but maybe I don't want to. It'll tell me. So we just took that off that carter and we're sticking it on this carter. I'm just going to roll it up. The same thing. Just use this rolling motion. There we go. Keep going. And don't be afraid to try different things in your yarns, making your yarns. Don't be afraid, afraid to try. Don't be a fried. Don't be a French fry. Don't be afraid to do whatever it is. So if you're watching this video and you're like, I wonder about this, I'm going to try this instead. Go for it. That's just fine. So here we are. If you've never blended three different types of wool before, this is a very, very fun, good, very good learning experience. This is something that increases your skills and increases uh, your experience of the fibers that you work with. And if you were to buy each of these fibers individually, like if you were to buy a whole sheep fleece, sheep's fleece, you're gonna pay, this one was quite expensive, um, but it's a, it's a good sheep fleece. So you can easily pay, um, you know, a hundred and some dollars for the fleece, easily. Then you can, then you have to buy the roving. Then you have to buy the angora. So if I had this option available to me when I first started working with fiber arts, I would have loved it. You don't even have to worry about it. It just gets sent to you. The videos just get posted. I'm going to send this through one more time. Do you notice some of these roll eggs are a little bit different colors? Depending on how much of each of the fibers I put in each of the roll eggs, that's going to make a fun yarn. And it's kind of getting on my pants here, which is pretty typical. So we're going to take this off. Here's the view of the rolling technique again. And I'm going to keep going. So we're about halfway done now with this ounce. And we've like really, if we're doing this for production, we've doubled our time at this point. We're almost approaching 20 minutes. And um, that's not what we want. We want to do this much faster than that. But the thing is, if you're just starting out, uh, working with a hand carter, these are pokey. These are very sharp. These are pokey, pokey, pokey. And so you can really start cutting up your hands and you can start cutting up your legs and cutting up. I mean, if you, you have to be careful with hand carters. That's 190 teeth, right? On the, these, 190 TPI. 
you, that's a lot of potential injury. So sometimes um, kids may want to do this, and it's best if they're wearing thick pants like jeans, a thick material, and if they're wearing uh, long sleeves, a nice long sleeve shirt, not thin, but a thick long sleeve shirt. Sometimes like a nice heavy sweatshirt material is a good place to start because you don't want kids getting scratched up because movements like this, what I was just doing, when you first start and your movements are not accurate, so you can get your hand like that and then you end up with like a whole bunch of scratches down your hand and people look at you like, wow, have you been fighting lions recently? No, no, just myself. So this does take a bit of muscle. The movements are, it's right here that I'm pulling with my, using my shoulder, a lot of my shoulder movements. And I'm going to leave this one. Take it off, just like we're doing here, unroll it. Almost done with this ounce. And after we're done with this ounce, we're going to do this for the other two ounces two more times. We divide this last section into two. Load up this hand carter. Um, to be honest with you, my natural inclination is just to do this silently, to do this quietly, to do this listening perhaps to another video, listening to a podcast, really taking the time and just enjoying, enjoying the process. It is a repetitive process and it's, a, it's such a feeling of success when you start doing this and you scratch yourself less and less and less and you start getting less and less naps and you start moving and carding more efficiently. It's really a, it really feels good. It really feels successful and like um, you, you can tell when you're improving your skills and that's a wonderful feeling because sometimes in life it's hard to tell when things are getting better. This is this is not one of those things. This is one of those things where it's clear to tell when it's getting better. So we really want to pull this as you can see. You can see the kind of rocking movement of my hand carters. I could send this through one more time. I'm not going to. If you look at this, for you guys that already have the March fiber boxes and they'll be going out all throughout March. Um, when you look at that, you see a little bit of, there's such a variety of colors in that brown. It's really, this is really a rich, rich brown. Like when you actually look, there's some that look yellowish green, there's red, there's orange, there's brown, brown. It's just really, I'm very impressed with this. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this yarn, but it's just, it's going to be lovely colors, nice depth of colors, which is absolutely amazing. The Angora is a natural color. I'm loading this hand card. Look at this. It's kind of a disaster. And that's okay, because when you use the carter, it'll straighten all that out for you. But this is a natural color Angora. It's just a beautiful tort, tort coloration. It's a black tortoise shell. That's the official color. Vienna marked black tortoise shell. Um, in rabbits, there's all sorts of different colors. And some colors in rabbits are not even, as you guys might know, they're not even like accepted. You can't show a rabbit with certain colors in certain breeds, but that doesn't mean you can't spin with it. So I don't show my rabbits. My rabbits, my Arthur line of rabbits are specifically a fiber, uh, a fiber friend is what I call my rabbits. So they're specifically for ease of handling easier to handle to shear, easier as pets, easier to live your life with if you want a house bunny, for example. Um, they're just easier. The wool is specifically so I can process this three times. I can go through a hand carter three times without it getting absolutely ruining the fiber. I can dye it. I can, you know, I can really ask a lot of that fiber while it maintains its integrity. It's, you know, it's not struggling to do what I ask of it. And it doesn't have a ton of guard hair. All right, last row leg in this. We're gonna do this, clean this up. So if you've enjoyed this video, there's almost 400 videos right now available to our best bonus bunny members, all sorts of videos. If you're interested in behind the scenes, in-depth, all sorts of additional info. 
on Fiber Arts, I encourage you to check out out, press the join button, look at your options, and join us. These are our completed Rolex. We have a little bit of second cuts right there. We can pick that out when we're spinning. And thank you so much for joining. We will see you in the next video.